to the graduating class of 2021. Let me extend my warmest congratulations. You have done it. You have reached the finish line under some extraordinary circumstances. While I regret that I cannot express my gratitude in person, I want to take this opportunity to offer my virtual congratulations on your very real achievements. I commend you on your commitment to your studies and your flexibility during these uncertain times. I'm thoroughly impressed with how you all have been able to adapt your studies and research to the more restrictive environment of the pandemic. You have pivoted to remote classrooms, modified your community research projects, and dealt with reduced and odd hours for your in-person lab research. Through all these hardships, you have not only persevered, but you have thrived, rising to the occasion with hard work, resiliency, and innovation. I hope that all of you are proud of what you have been able to accomplish. Even as we celebrate this achievement, the ongoing efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19 remind us just how important you and your work are and will continue to be. Biosciences education and research are key to curbing the large-scale health emergencies like COVID-19. And I just know that the training and experience that you have gained here at Keck School win enable you to become thoughtful and capable leaders. As future experts and leaders in public health and biomedical research, you will be called upon to discover, innovate, and apply all your abilities to elevate medical and health-related issues. No matter where you work takes you, I hope that you always remember that you are a member of a large world, one that tethers you to the communities, local, national, and international. I am proud to know that you will be representing USC and the Keck School of Medicine as you go forth into the world. On behalf of the faculty and staff here at USC, congratulations once again. I hope that you are able to share this wonderful day with your loved ones. Good morning. I have always wondered what a Grand Marshal is and does. So I did some research and found in Merriam-Webster's Thesaurus that its earliest use was only recorded in 1951. And that it has been used since in motorsport racing as the person who waves flags and in the Star Wars movies as the highest rank of the TIE Fighters. It is also the 14th and highest PvP rank in the game World of Warcraft. So I thought, now, what am I supposed to do? Wave a flag or battle another player? Fortunately, Wikipedia defined it as a royal court, ceremonial, military, or political officer of very high rank. And I thought, ooh, that sounds better. So therefore, despite this difficult pandemic year in which you showed great resilience, I would like to welcome all of the students who are graduating today, along with their parents, family, and guests. Congratulations to all of you students receiving your graduate degrees today. This represents an important accomplishment. It also represents an important transition in your professional development and career. Your graduate degree is not a certificate that you hang on a wall. It carries the recognition that you have reached an important stage of advanced knowledge and training, 
It also carries the responsibility that you conduct yourself in a professional manner that upholds the standards upon which your degree is awarded. You are no longer simply a recipient of the knowledge of others. You now have your own growing repertoire of experience and knowledge to use and share with others as you move forward. But it is perhaps even more important that you have also begun to develop the capacity for critical evaluation and thinking. These will be the most important tools to take with you and apply in every aspect of your private and professional lives. I would therefore like to encourage you never to stop developing this special skill to make thorough, critical evaluations and develop creative ideas. This skill in the scientific method will make you a special member of our society. Your challenge will be to use these skills in collaboration with your colleagues to find solutions that improve our world. Again, congratulations on your achievements. Joshua Menlotok is a student in the Global Medicine Program. And before joining USC, Josh earned both his bachelor's and master's of public health from the California State University of Northridge. While at USC, Josh didn't let being virtual stop him from engaging with the USC community. Josh is an active member of several USC student organizations, contributing to our rich and vibrant student community. Josh is most passionate about advocating for public health and global health access. His efforts to improve health also includes working with organizations such as Floating Doctors, which provides medical support and services to international communities in remote areas. Josh is also actively involved in research, which includes type 2 diabetes, inhibition among geriatric communities, and telehealth implementation and its effects on patient outcomes. Josh currently works as an epidemiologist for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health in, and is involved in deployment in their outbreak management. And there he works with a number of surveillance teams to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Josh plans to become an epidemiologist physician and focus on integrating research and patient care, a truly noble goal. Please welcome Joshua Mondotok. Thank you, Dr. Katz. Good morning, family, friends, faculty, staff, and fellow graduates. I am both humbled and honored to share it in the intensity of emotions filling this virtual commencement celebration. And with that said, to my fellow graduates, let me be the first one to say that you are all outliers. Malcolm Gladwell defines an outlier as someone exceptional, an expert in their respective field, someone superior that they define their own category of success. Gladwell states that mastery requires hours of work, and that magic number is the accumulation of 10,000 hours, which, if you calculate the number of hours in your life, with time spent in school, studying, completing homework and projects, internships, overcoming adversity, learning from mistakes, plus the additional time and effort in managing through this current pandemic. You'll see, you'll see that you have put in those 10,000 hours, if not more, in becoming more knowledgeable and wiser in understanding yourself and in defining your own success. 2020 was an arduous year because of an extraordinary event that challenged everyone it tested our patience and our morale. Our experiences with were limited just to us students, but also for our families, our friends, 
our neighbors, for all human beings around the world. This pandemic abruptly forced us to adjust simple everyday activities, such as running errands, learning, socializing, and even connecting with people. I want to emphasize that this experience taught us firsthand about our resilience, our ability to adapt to changing circumstances, in being more patient, and more importantly, demonstrated our tenacious will and determination to achieve our educational goals, despite the barriers we were presented. So when life decides to throw another unexpected curveball, hurdle, challenge, or whatever you would like to call it, remember that because of our shared experiences today, we are more confident in our ability to overcome and triumph in those situations of tomorrow. I also want to reassure you that it is okay to admit that it's been difficult to keep your head high during these unprecedented times. It's okay to have set higher expectations for yourself. It's okay that you are selfish. Looking back at the countless hours of hard work, sleepless nights, sacrifices, and self-doubt, you have been indirectly preparing yourself for the inevitable and the unexpected. Our shared USC experience will be a part of us forever, and we will always have that special bond as fellow Trojans. As the saying goes, once a Trojan, always a Trojan. So as we move forward to the next chapter of our lives, remember to fight on. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Caitlin Mills is a doctoral student in the biostatistic program and earned her Bachelor of Science degree in genetics and genomics from the University of California, Davis. As an active member of the USC community, Caitlin has greatly impacted and improved the lives of others within and outside the university. She was a founding member of the Graduate Women in Sciences Los Angeles chapter. She has held several leadership roles in the USC graduate student government, including director of finance, and most recently as vice president of administration, where she successfully advocated to convert funding to provide relief aid to USC graduate students experiencing hardship during the pandemic. Her service to the community outside of USC includes tutoring and mentoring of K-12 students through the School of Wheels program. Caitlin is best described as being curious with the varied array of hobbies and interests that span from bird watching, reading the classics, weightlifting, to keeping up with politics while learning French and exploring 1980s culture. However, her true strength lies in her research. Under the guidance of her faculty advisor, Dr. Hayu Mi, Caitlin's dissertation focuses on using a machine learning approach to harness publicly available data curated from the literature to accurately predict new enhanced gene regulations that are associated with genetic diseases, including many types of cancer. And her work has been published in leading articles in her field, like Nature Protocols and PLOS One. Truly impressive. Please welcome Caitlin Mills. Thank you, Dr. Katz. Good morning, fellow graduates, esteemed colleagues, and of course, our friends and family. As we graduate today, grappling with excitement and maybe some nerves, we reflect on not only the completion of our degrees, but also on their inception. How did we get to where we are now? I can tell you that I came to grad school because I was looking to travel down a new and challenging road 
but also for a safe road to a secure career. I remember at the time, I felt very stagnant, and I had this feeling that graduate school was my best chance to reinvigorate myself, to discover the goal of my ambitions. I can honestly say I had no idea what I was getting into. When I got here, I was amazed, not just at the metropolis of Los Angeles, but at the university itself. I remember how impressed I was with the wealth of knowledge and expertise that surrounded me, and also the humility I saw displayed by accomplished intellectuals. My perspective was broadened by my exposure to all of the students in different programs, professions, and fields of study that I never even knew existed in some cases. I met other students who came from all over the world, who spoke different languages, and could talk about places I had only read about, who were born into different traditions and were generous in sharing their lived experiences. As graduate students, we have bonded over our shared struggles with doubts and fears, hard work, and hard-won triumphs. But we have also engaged in struggles that were not shared. We have been members of a rich and vibrant community, but as individuals, we have all had to carve our own paths. During my PhD, I learned a lot more than theories and techniques. I learned about the power of mentorship, but also the power in being brave enough to push past the fear of being a bother to someone important and asking them for guidance. I learned that oftentimes those conversations can lead to teamwork and collaborations unlike anything I could have anticipated. I learned to push for something bigger, to pursue something less attainable, and to try to achieve more than I deemed realistic. Along the way, I've learned to believe in myself. Most of us have, at some point while working toward this degree, asked ourselves, how will I be different on the other side of this? How will I have fundamentally changed, expanded my horizons, become better or more learned than when I arrived? What is the real value of this degree? Perhaps we ask ourselves these questions most urgently when we hit a rough patch. Looking back across all of the setbacks and breakthroughs, I believe that the biggest transformation that we have undergone in this process is in gaining the ability to become experts, to find a reasonable approach, even when presented with a problem we initially know very little about. We learn to figure it out anyway. We learn to research. We learn to problem solve. That is what sets us apart as graduates. We have all had to become experts in problem solving. That is the real value in this degree. It seems certain that we will confront new problems in the future, but remember, you have all been trained to do this. Remember that during your time at USC, you have risen to many challenges and you have succeeded. Don't be afraid to push your limits, to embrace your own sense of confidence, to speak up and to fight for a good idea. I urge you to continue to challenge yourself and to never stop seeking out opportunities for growth. Congratulations and good luck. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Eric Schultze as our commencement speaker. We are especially pleased to welcome Eric back, even if virtually, to the Keck School of Medicine, as he received his PhD here in the Genetic, Cellular, and Molecular Biology program in 2010. Eric is not only a molecular biologist and a genetic engineer, but he has also worked in the areas of science policy at the National Science Foundation, where he helped to develop federal STEM education policy as a TV presenter and as a U.S. Food and Drug Administration regulator within the Obama administration. He is currently vice president 
of Product and Regulation at Memphis Meats, where he leads the design and development of the company's first ever cell-based meat products, as well as its regulatory policy and government affairs. Dr. Schultze also currently advises the National Academy of Sciences Roundtable for Systemic Change in Undergraduate STEM Education and hosts the Ask Smithsonian online show. I strongly encourage you all to check out some of his Ask Smithsonian videos. You will find them to be wonderfully entertaining and educational one-minute experiences. He makes frequent appearances in the media and on stage to speak broadly about food science and cooking. Dr. Schultz's career is truly inspirational and a wonderful example of how a love for science and an open mind can lead you to a career you never imagined when you began your graduate studies. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Eric Schultz to our commencement ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Farnham. Good tidings to each graduate, to your loved ones who've supported you, and to the mentors who've trained you. Congratulations. We as a species are of no particular cosmological importance, and yet here we sit, sentient and rational. I said 10 years ago in this very stage that we are temporary areas of low entropy. We are collections of atoms born of elements forged in the nuclear furnaces of our nearest stars. Life exists because of the silent, violent deaths of millions of ancient stars, and the world we have built, conquered, and will continue to explore is predicated upon the diaspora of these stellar remains. You and everyone you have ever known are made of star stuff. Everything that we know, our planet, our lives, our bodies, our memories, are made from these stellar nurseries, the same materials as the river stone, the same as the sun and the moon, and yet somehow we are able to sit here and experience it. Now, why does this matter today as you turn and face the wind yet again? Because you are sentient and rational, your particular atomic arrangement is unique enough to be a sign purpose that changes. More than that, you are each a beautiful transient collection of atoms that can self-assign purpose. The sun can only shine, but you you can willingly change. So it is not the fact that you are here that makes this moment remarkable. No, it is that you have chosen this trait, this purpose, science, we call it, which makes you honorable and unique. The profession of science, which requires you to question the very fabric of reality every day to tease out the weft of our cosmos into understanding, is not just a job. Professional science is a cosmological service and you graduates are our next most promised stewards of reality and the future. Science is service to the unknown and the unborn. Science is your chance to always do the right thing, to cause the next paradigm shift, to tilt reality back into balance, to prevent pandemics, and to build innovation that knocks down walls between humans rather than inventing yet another one to further divide us. And having built a career working across academia, the private and public sectors, I see a distinct future for science that differs from the one we see today. One that reflects the abilities of the newest generation of humans that is unique from those before. You will move professional science towards expertise in multiple domains, equally competent in all rather than hyper-special in just one field. And as we face continued climate crises, you will use tomorrow's knowledge to build bridges to our past, allowing us to cherish our most important human traditions while inventing new ones for the future to enjoy. And I'm here to say today that we need you, my fellow explorers of the unseen and unknown, to continue our work. From ignorance to convention to exploration to paradigm shift, this model is what allows humans to tease at the weft of the cosmic tapestry. In short, I wish you all the best in your journey across this universe. And I will tell you, you can do it. I am proof that you don't need to be particularly smart or talented, proof that you don't need to be born into wealth nor have any ability beyond insatiable curiosity and an appetite for wonder. Beyond this though, you'll need your loved ones, your grit, and your empathy. My name is Dr. Eric Schulze, and today, like every day, I am at your service. It is my hope that each of you will continue to choose the righteous path that is the service 
to this cosmos, to help us to continue to understand ourselves as a part of it by looking back, finding the guardrails of reality, and using those collectively broad, curious shoulders to stand higher, look further, and do more. To the graduates here today, I hope that in 10 years, at least one of you will return to this stage to tell us how you've built the world to be a more wondrous place. And to everyone watching from home in your sweatpants, I bid you ad astra. Congratulations again. Thank you. Today's commencement celebration is momentous as it is a testament to our commitment to persevere during these unprecedented times, signifies hope in the face of adversity and the enduring belief that we will strive to help shape society in the future. Despite the challenges we face, I'm most grateful for the supporting community we have in USC. The Trojan spirit is real. All the faculties and students come through as a Trojan community to support one another. As your Associate Dean of Graduate Studies, I want to say congratulations. I am so proud of you. I wish you every success. Congratulations, class of 2021. I'm sure today will be only the first of many proud, successful moments for you. So congratulations today and best wishes for all your tomorrows. Congratulations, you did it. The one thing I will miss most about USC are the various friendships that I've have established in the past two years. While many of us never met each other in person as we're spread all over the United States, we have supported one another inside and outside of the classroom. We faced many challenges this year, but despite those challenges, today I am grateful for my friends and family. Gracias por todo. Los amo. Thank you for being a part of my support and my community. It's taken a whole village and today I celebrate you. Congratulations class of 2020 and 2021. I am most grateful for all of the amazing friendships we've built, for our supportive faculty and mentors, and for our wonderful patients who have taught us so much. Fight on. I wish to take this time to thank my family and friends who have supported me every single day, including ones like my father who couldn't be here with us today. I wish to thank the professors and mentors who have paved the way, who have provided guidance and helped keep my stress at bay. Lastly, I wish to thank the graduating class of 2021. You all made this past year's experience truly memorable and fun. On behalf of the graduating class of 2020 and 2021, I want to say that we are grateful and thankful to our network of friends and families professors and USC staff, many of whom are not able to join us in person today, but nevertheless have always been supportive of our goals throughout the years. You're done with your papers. You're done with your tests. You're a magical class. It's simply the best. We'll miss you, Global Medicine. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of the Student Affairs Office in the Department of Preventive Medicine, Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2021. It's been an honor to share any part of this journey with you. And remember, as you move forward, pain is inevitable, but suffering, that's optional. Congratulations, graduates. You all have worked so hard to be here today, and I'm so proud of you. I know that you'll make such an impact and profound mark on the world, leaving here to take on the world's biggest challenges and you'll have your family here at USC and fellow students as colleagues along the way. Good luck and congratulations. 
Congratulations, Class of 2021. You have reason to be proud of your accomplishments. A special shout out to the Master of Public Health graduates and to all of you, I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Congratulations, Class of 2021 from the Integrative Anatomical Sciences Program. From the USC Program of Nurse Anesthesia to all Keck School of Medicine graduates, congratulations. Your perseverance, dedication, and scholarship have brought you to this defining moment. Hi, I'm Julie Nyquist, Director of the Master of Academic Medicine Program. Congratulations to all of our 2020 and 2021 graduates. It was a delight working with each of you and you will always be part of our learning community. Again, congratulations. Congratulations, graduates. It's always a joy to see the critical thinkers that you become. So you're ready for your next adventure. Go and enjoy it. Congratulations. We now present to you the graduating class of 2020 and 2021.